Hello everyone, hope all is well and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face of first impressions. I think I have everything to do a full face, which is really fun and exciting. I do have a lot of products that are just new to me and some that are new to the market. I have some new Milani goodies, some Kosas, a bunch of fun things I'm excited to try out. So before we get into it, I just wanted to say how thankful I am for you guys. I did miss a few uploads just because I'm going through a breakup. I did mention it over on Instagram, but just in case if you didn't see that post or you don't have Instagram or if you don't follow me, which by the way, you should, I would really appreciate it. And on the post that I shared that I was going through a breakup, I asked for advice and I was completely shocked on the response of that post. I think I received over 600 comments of amazing advice and support and that brought me so much comfort and joy and I just wanna say how thankful I am for you guys. Through all of this, even though that breakup suck, yeah, I have so many things to be joyful about in my life and a lot of it is thanks to you guys. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you. I am so lucky to have this community. I won't be going into detail with what happened in the breakup, just out of respect for the relationship, him and me. But honestly, the last few days I've been feeling amazing. Things are lining up for me and I just feel like a huge weight has been lifted. I just feel very, very good. And things are looking up and I'm really excited for my life. But anyways, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Before we get into the video, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It means so much to me and let's get to it. So getting into the products, Milani came out with a bunch of new things. They came out with two skincare collections, which is really nice, a rose collection and a green goddess collection. I did just read the card a little bit and I did pass down this lip balm to my brother because he needed a lip balm, his lips were super dry and he liked that it was like cannabis themed. I just read that this one is one of those that adapts to your natural pH and turns pink. So that'll be interesting later on when I go downstairs and he'll have a nice pink tinted lip. For the Green Goddess collection, they came out with a face oil. They also came out with a sleeping mask and primer that has more of a thick consistency. And they came out with that lip balm that I don't have right now. And then for the Rose collection, they came out with a prep and brighten face oil and this lightweight prep and hydrate primer and a lip mask, which I've been using the last few days and it's quite nice. I'm just gonna put some on right now. But I haven't tried anything else from the collection, just the lip balm, since my skin feels a little bit dry since I've been inside a lot. But I think I wanna go in with this Green Goddess Cannabis Sativa Seed Oil Sleeping Mask and Primer. Oof, is it gonna be green? No. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> it's kind of like a minty green. Doesn't smell like weed. That's good, it just smells like herbs. But it's a nice thick consistency, it feels very hydrating. And under this I already had my skincare products, my SPF and all of that kind of stuff already. So this is just gonna be a nice extra barrier of hydration. So that feels really nice, I'll have to continue using it and I'll definitely be updating you, but it feels nice and thick and moisturizing. It almost has the same kind of feeling as the Summer Fridays Jet Lag Mask, which I love to wear under makeup too if I feel like I need that extra boost. And now I'm gonna go in with this Wonder Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. They sent me a nice little PR package this week and I've never tried this product before and I think it's just gonna be like a glow giving product. So I'm gonna just focus this on the high points of my face. Focusing on the cheekbones, my bridge of my nose, and the rest I'll feather on the forehead and the chin as well. It's nice, it gives a nice radiant glow that's not glittery or anything. It just gives like a nice natural looking glow. I really like the look of that. I feel like it did give me a boost of glow, which is always my goal. So now I'm gonna go in with this new Milani Screen Queen foundation. They sent me the correct shades. In one of my recent videos, they sent me the wrong PR package, I think, with the foundations in deeper tones. So that was really sweet of them to send me the correct one. So cute. I have the shades 240, 250, and 260. I will swatch them on my face because I know that's very helpful for you guys. This is 240, which I think that's going to be like a perfect match. 250 is a little bit warmer. That actually is a really good match as well. And then the last one, 260, which is too warm. 
Honestly, I think this one might be the best match here. I'm just gonna blend it out with a clean finger. Both of those are actually really good matches. I think I'm gonna go in with this one. This one like disappears completely. This one looks a little bit light and that one's a little bit too golden. I've heard really great things about this foundation so far. It sounds like one that I'm gonna really like. It's a natural finish foundation and it kind of has more of a light to medium coverage. I'm just gonna be blending this out with my Royal Linical Complexion Brush as always. I'm just gonna go over everything with a sponge. Okay, so I definitely think it oxidizes a little bit. I feel like it turned a little bit warm. I think I should have went with my first instinct and went with 240 instead of 250, but I'll have to try 240 tomorrow. But otherwise, this looks really nice. Uh, I don't use any skin filters or anything like that. So you can see my natural skin texture and how the product is sitting on top of it. It looks amazing on the cheeks. I do have a little bit of dry patches on my forehead right now just because of the acne treatment I was using, but it's not picking up on it at all. It's I can still see the dry patches, but it's not enhancing them whatsoever, which is nice. So this looks really nice. It doesn't look like a drugstore foundation to me. It looks a little bit more high quality in my opinion. So that's good. But now I'm going to go in with concealer and I purchased this one a little bit ago, maybe last month. The Kosas concealer that's quite new to the market and I picked up the shade 04. I've never used this and I'm very excited to use it. I think I should have purchased maybe a lighter tone. I feel like that's a little bit too yellow again, <laughs> but we'll see once it's blended out. I'm just going to blend it out with my sponge. It's not the worst. I think it'll be a good summer concealer. I'm just going to add a little touch more. Once I get a little bit more tanned, I feel like this will be a good tone, but for me right now, it's not the best. The sponge kind of sucks. It's the first time I used it. I don't I don't like this one. It's from ColourPop, but I like the original one the best. Mine were just super dirty and I was too lazy to wash it before this video. That looks beautiful. Like the finish and the texture of this product looks very beautiful. It kind of reminds me of the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer, which is my favorite concealer of all time. So this is really nice. It just gives more of a glow, a little bit more of like a glossy finish under the eye. Not super glossy, but just like a nice radiant look under there, which is really promising to me. I really love that. I guess I don't have any new loose powders, so I'm just gonna be using my favorite, the Milk Makeup Blur and Set, and I do this all the time. So I just take a little bit of powder on my sponge here and I just stamp it right there. That was a lot. I can't get a very good precision with the sponge. And I let that kind of sit and settle while I do my brows. That is a beautiful concealer. I'm actually really excited for this one. I feel like it's gonna be a new favorite. That glow under the eyes is really nice. I might have to pick up another shade of this because it's a little bit deep. I love when concealers give a lot of glow right here. I think it just looks so healthy and nice, especially with eye makeup. I don't know, it looks very editorial and very model-esque in my opinion. So I'm gonna go quickly do my brows off camera, so please enjoy the brow intermission. So now that the brows are on, I'm gonna move on to the bronzing and highlighting, and I got this Charlotte Tilbury Filmstar Bronze and Glow Palette, which looks very lovely. The bronzer side, though, looks very cool toned to me, but I guess we'll see how it reacts to the face once it goes on. I'm gonna first go in with the bronzing side, and I'm gonna use this Airbrush Precision Foundation Brush from Sephora, which someone sent me a dupe of it, which was so nice and helpful, so I'll link that one down below. Oh no, that is quite warm once it's on the face. So this formula is actually quite nice. It is blending out beautifully over top of unset foundation. I don't really enjoy setting my whole face, as you guys know. I mostly get oily in the center of my face, so my forehead, my apples of my cheeks, and my chin occasionally, but mostly in those three areas, and the rest is quite normal, so that's why I don't really set the rest of my face. 
Plus I like looking very glowy. I think it's a touch too red for my skin tone. I do have more of a yellow undertone to me. So things that are a little bit more pink or red show up a little bit more dramatically on me. So I feel like this isn't the best match for me. Maybe it's reacting weird with the foundation I'm using since that one is a little bit too warm for me today, but we'll see. But now I'm gonna move on to the highlighting side. See how this goes. I'm gonna be blending it out with a Nabla uh, highlighter brush, my favorite. Okay, that's very intense. I did not expect that. It's very icy as well. I'm not a fan of this already. I just know it. I don't think, I kind of know automatically if a product is gonna be one that I reach for or use and I don't really feel that towards this one. I feel like that looks very chalky and even facing forward, I see the undercast and it looks like sidewalk chalk. It's like very obvious that's a highlighter. It doesn't look natural whatsoever. It kind of just looks like a strip. So I'm just gonna go over with my bronzer brush just to like kind of take that down. I don't really see myself using this very much. I might even pass it on. I don't know, I really, really don't like it. So now for my blush, I do have a few and I think I wanna go in with like a red lipstick today and kind of more of like a warm-ish eye. But I think I'm gonna try this one from Charlotte Tilbury. It looks nice. This is the shade Ecstasy. It's kind of neat. It looks more like a neutral peach. So that might be nice. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of this. I haven't tried much from Charlotte Tilbury, to be honest. I don't know why, but this is a BH Cosmetics number two brush. Might be a nice wintry blush. I do like that formula. I like how it just kind of looks like a natural flush. That is actually pretty. I think it's a tone that I don't really use often, but I think in the winter when I feel like more of a pinky look, that'll be very beautiful. I do like the looks of that. So we'll see how that settles and wears, but that showed up beautifully. It looks like a flush that is natural, like it's coming from within, but paired with this highlighter and bronzer that don't look like it's natural and coming from within, I don't really like that look. So I'm gonna try this again because I think it's a nice formula, but paired with things that I like already, I think will be a lot better. I'm not really a fan of the way the base is looking right now. The foundation and things are beautiful, but the highlighter, bronzer and stuff, not not a fan. I did have another blush I wanted to try, the Ilia blush. This got lost in my new products drawer. This is the shade Dreamer. It's a cream stick blush. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. I'm gonna set that out right on my desk here so I can try this out very soon in an upcoming video. Okay, so now moving on to the eye portion. I've had this in my new products drawer for a very long time. It's a Visart palette. I honestly don't get the hype of Visart. This is the Structure Brow and Eyeshadow Palette. This is a good one to have in a makeup artist kit, I, I would imagine, because it can be used on the eyes and brows. And these are like kind of like a pomade or cream shadow formula. And then the rest, you get your cool tones, warm tones, and these like, I don't know, greenish gray. These ones read really weird to me. I don't get the hype with Visart. I feel like this looks like a $10 palette. Like you can get this at the drugstore and these are so incredibly ins expensive. I don't understand. I've never tried the formula or anything, but just speaking on first impressions and holding it and looking at it, I wouldn't pay the price tag for this. Like the sticker on the back is like half-assed applied. It's all crooked. This is so weird. Uh, this has been in my drawers forever and I've never used it yet. So, but today's the day, we'll see how it goes. My eyes are primed and I use the Fenty Beauty Concealer as my eye primer. So I think the first shade I'm gonna be going in with is this one right here. This is a Melt Cosmetics 818 brush and I'm just gonna be blending that shade in the crease. So now I'm gonna go into the shade that's right beside it, this one right here, and I'm gonna be using this Blank Canvas E10 brush. So I'm gonna take that first shade. This is a Fenty Beauty 200 eyeshadow brush. And I'm just going to dust it on the lid here. And then I'm gonna take the deepest shade from this row, 
this one right here. And I'm gonna deepen this up even more. It's kind of like patchy right here for some reason. So I'm just gonna try to even that out. So now I think I'm gonna try to do like a little bit of a winged eyeliner situation and I'm gonna just use the black from this palette right here. Uh, might mix it in with the brown we were just using just to make it a little bit softer. And I'm just gonna do like a little mini wing starting from right here because I'm gonna connect it to the bottom. I'm just going in with the black alone and it's not the most pigmented black I've ever had. Like it kind of reads more of like a charcoaly brown. And for the rest of the eye, I'm just gonna tap back and forth into those two shades. It's doing like a weird thing where it's not sticking down to each other. So it's like just applying the initial layer and you can't build it up further than that. And you can see like right in my crease here where it's like lighter than it is here or down here. That's the sign of a shadow I do not want to be associated with. <laughs> this palette gets like a two out of 10. Wet n Wild eyeshadow palette that I love so much is like 10 times better than this for mattes. And that palette is $5, not 100 plus dollars. So I'm just gonna go quickly catch this eye up to speed and I'll be right back. Okay, so here's how the eyes turned out. By the second, it looks like it's getting patchier and patchier. Um, if my eyes are open, it's not bad, but when you go like this, not good. But now I'm gonna put on some mascara. I'm gonna be trying this Illamasqua mascara. I've never tried anything from Illamasqua. They sent me a really nice package with a few things and I will be trying them out over the next few weeks, but I'm gonna try this one out today. We'll see how this goes. It's a nice, big, fluffy brush. I feel like this one gives more of like a natural appearance to the lashes. It just kind of coats them and makes them look nicely groomed and curled. It's not super voluminizing or lengthening. It's just kind of like an average mascara. I can't say it's my favorite so far. Maybe it just needs some time to kind of thicken up. Nice. This is definitely not easy to apply on the lower lashes. I think I'm gonna give up and go to my Glossier. For my lower lashes, it's just so much easier to apply. I don't really like how this is looking at all. It looks nice when my eyes are open, actually. I wanna try this again with a palette that actually is good. So here's three coats of that mascara on the top lashes. I think this is gonna be a good one once it kinda of sits in my collection for a bit and thickens up. But for right now, it just looks more like a natural looking mascara. It doesn't give a lot of volume, nor does it give a lot of length. It just kinda of defines the lashes. They do look really nice. They don't look spidery at all. But for right now, it's not my favorite. I would way rather go for my Pat McGrath mascara or the Ilia one. And for the bottom lashes, I wasn't a fan of the brush. It was really hard to control, so we'll see about that. So here are the eyes all finished. They're not the worst, but they're definitely not the best, especially for a $100 palette. Like, it does not reflect that at all on the eyes or in the packaging or anything. I don't understand this brand. But anyways, now let's move on to the lips. So for the lips, I want to go in with something red and I just received the MAC and Selena collection. Let me zoom you guys out so you can see. So this is the PR packaging. It's so beautiful. I wish this was my style because this would look so beautiful on a shelf. But the products came out in a drawer like this. It's a beautiful, beautiful collection. And they did such an amazing job for round two of the Selena collection. Such a beautiful photo of her. In the collection, they came out with two liquid lipsticks one more pinky berry lip and one 90s brown nude and two lip glass glosses this one has more of like a white gold base with a pink reflect glitter in it and this one is just like a nice pink glittery with a silver glitter and then they also came out with two lipsticks with a deep red and a nude this is a cream formula and this is a matte formula i'm thinking i might go in with this red today they also came out with this beautiful highlighter which sadly is too deep for me but look at that. That is incredible. 
probably the product I was most excited about in this collection that is beautiful to look at. I love the insert that they put in on all the products, so stunning. And I like how the packaging of the product were inspired by her bra top in the picture they chose. And lastly, they came out with a beautiful eyeshadow palette, which kind of reminds me of the Mothership Bronze Seduction palette. Do you guys get those vibes too, a little bit? Without this pinky one, I feel like it kind of gives me those vibes, but this is a really nice palette. So I'll have to try these out another day, but I just wanted to show that to you guys. And I'm not gonna swatch the highlighter just because it's not my tone. I can tell it's gonna be way too dark, especially when the light's not hitting it. So I might give that away to someone who would suit it. I also forgot they came out with a lip liner as well, which is just a nice red, I believe. It's a nice, like more pinky cherry red, which would look nice with the lipstick and the liquid lipstick in this collection. I don't think I'm gonna use this lip liner because it's a little bit too cherry red for me. So I think I'm gonna use this Urban Decay lip liner. I've never tried any of their lip liners. This one's in the shade Gash, which is more of like a blue red, which is more of the red I like on myself personally. I'll zoom you guys in so you can see the application. That is a beautiful formula. I've been really missing out, although I just have been getting into lip liners like in the last few months. And now I'm gonna go in with the lipstick. Okay, it's not really a matte lipstick. It does have like a shine to it, like a really subtle sheen, but it looks amazing. That is a beautiful, 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 <laughs> what? I'm really happy I went with a bold lip to distract from the patchy eyes. I am so happy with that combo, wow. Okay, so here is the finished final look. I really love how it looks overall. There were a few mishaps, but Otherwise, looking at the full face now, I think it came together very beautifully. So now I'm gonna give you my final thoughts about everything I tried out today. So I'm first gonna start off with the positives and the things that I loved the most. So first with the lip combo, I think this is my favorite thing of today. I really love how it turned out. I would really recommend both of these products, especially the lipstick. It feels so nice and nourishing on the lips. It doesn't feel like they're retro matte or anything. It does have like that movement to it and it's really nice and comfortable on the lips. I don't feel it on my lips at all. It's a beautiful color and such a beautiful tribute to Selena. Very gorgeous. I'm excited to try out the rest of the collection, but I'm really excited about this duo. It's the type of red that I do really love on myself. It's a blue red, and I always think that's more flattering. My next favorite is the Screen Queen foundation. I'm really excited about this. I think it looks very beautiful on my skin. I'm really excited to try it out with my primers I already love. I think this is one that you'll definitely be seeing a bunch. For a drugstore one, this is very nice. It kind of reminds me of the Flower Beauty one, but almost better in the sense that it does look just like skin. So I'll give you an update on how it wears with other products before I fully recommend it, but right now I'm super excited about it. But for the two hours it's been on my face so far, looking amazing. And I loved how it didn't accentuate my dry patches I have on my forehead right now, or right here I also have some dry patches, but it doesn't, it just kind of ignores them, doesn't enhance them or cling on to them, just gives like a nice hydrating base, so it's really looking good. My next favorite was the Kosas Concealer. I'm really happy I went ahead and picked this up. I think it looks beautiful. I am excited to try this out a few more times as well before I give you my final recommendation, but as of right now, super excited about it. I love how it gave like a healthy glow under the eyes and it's not creasing anywhere in my finer lines around here, which is some good news and it gives a really nice radiant glowy finish under there, which I love. Next for the Wonder Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. Before I applied the highlighter, my skin was looking amazing in the areas I applied this, so I do see myself using this a lot. I love my Glotion or my Glow Giving Primers, things like that, as you guys know, so this one will definitely be a well-loved one in my collection. I'm happy it doesn't have any chunky glitter or visible pearls or sparkle or anything. It's just a lovely sheen that just 
looks very natural and radiant and those are all the products I super love now let's get into the products I'm like kind of unsure about I guess the first one is the cheek to chic blush from Charlotte Tilbury in the shade ecstasy not sure about it yet I think the formula was beautiful it gave like it gave like a nice natural flush to the cheeks I want to try this out again without that bronzer and highlighter to see how it looks with products I already know and love. Next with the mascara, I think this is a nice everyday mascara. I just don't see myself using it as much as the ones I already know and love, but we'll see in about a month the way it kind of reacts or settles down, thickens up, you know, when mascaras do that good thing. We'll see. I'll continue using it because I do think that this is going to turn out amazing. Like I do think my lashes look really good, but I do really like a voluminizing and lengthening effect personally. Next with the Milani Green Goddess Mask. I did really like the way it felt under makeup. This is also like a sleeping mask, so I will be using it like that. I did just run out of my Summer Fridays mask, so this came into my life at the perfect moment. It actually might be, I'm just realizing it now, I think it might be like a dupe for the Summer Fridays one. It even has the same type of packaging and it does kind of smell like the Summer Fridays mask. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm just realizing that now. So this is really exciting. It might be an affordable dupe for the Summer Fridays jet lag mask. So I'm gonna continue trying this out and I'm gonna see if it's an actual dupe and I will for sure let you know. I am gonna be doing an empties video with that soon, so maybe I'll give you an update within that one. And now moving into the products I disliked, I definitely don't see myself ever using the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Filmstar Bronze and Glow Palette again. This side turned out to be way too warm for my skin tone and this is way too icy and intense for me. It gives me a kind of like a Tin Man situation look and I just, I feel like it looks very chalky like I really don't like that look it looks too artificial to me and you guys know I like when highlighters look just natural this just looks like a fake strip to me not my favorite at all and something I was a little bit savage towards this this palette would not recommend it I just looked up the price it is on sale at Sephora now so it is like $84 instead of $100 Canadian so if you want a patchy matte mess go right ahead but for me I would not recommend this at all I don't think that my eyes look amazing whatsoever. I was hopeful at the beginning. It did feel like a Natasha Denona shadow with the crease color, but then I went downhill from there. They didn't build up nicely. They don't scream high quality to me, like at all. Even with this packaging and the sideways sticker, like this, no. I'm so annoyed with this palette that it gave me a gray hair. Do you see it? It's right here. I'm just kidding. I'm I'm actually going gray. I have like a whole patch right here. I need to get my roots done. But anyways, so that's my final thoughts about all the products I tried out today. I will definitely update you guys on the complexion products and all of that. So I really hope this video was helpful. I might have gotten a little bit sassy. That just might be from the breakup I'm going through, but you know happens. <laughs> but that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful and fun. I will link all the products I used in today's video in the description down below as always, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye!